This is a Kango drill. It's a Kango 426. It's a 110 volt, so it's got a yellow plug like that. 600 watts, uh, steel up to 13 mil. And I think it's meant to do up to 26 mil in masonry. It's got a hammer drilling function and a normal function. There's a switch for them down there and it's got this adjustable handle. It's got an SDS chuck, depth gauge, trigger, and around the trigger the rubber has failed. Uh, it had a rubber seal around that, that's died. In service recently, it's been getting very hot. I've been using it to drill cores. Drilling cores, it's probably not what it was intended for. It's only a very compact little drill. Because it was getting hot, I had a look in here and I thought, you can see the fan blade in there, just about. The fan blade didn't seem to be going around. Maybe there's a problem. In here is the bearing, and the fan, the end of the armature. Got these kind of self-tapping plastic screws. I've always had good success with this drill. It has done four inch cores repeatedly into brick. It doesn't have a chisel only function, so it won't do chasing. Generally, as a, as a, as a masonry drill, it's really, really good. Got a bit of clay there from having it left on something. Just rock that upwards. You can see in there, there's a seating for the bearing. There's a rubber seal and there's a little bearing there. And then there's this fan. The brushes are in underneath these side covers, held on by another two plastic self-tapping screws. I haven't been in here recently. There's the brushes in there and these are great fun to try and replace. That's the rubber seat. So it just brute force pulls that armature out. It's got a worm gear, armature's in good nick, and the contact ring for the brushes. And so the brushes are wired through in two little tabs here and here. And these just clip out as little units, and that one's damaged on the corner, but it still works. So what's happening was the fan was over, or the, the, the armature was overheating, the windings were overheating. The drill wasn't shutting down, it was still working, but getting pretty hot. Not good for it. So we can slide this armature through that plastic casing there. There's the commutator ring. It's well polished, well used. It's a well used drill, but it's okay. This little piece of plastic fell off here. And it's just the bearing cover. So what I tried to do was put a bit of something in there, a bit of cardboard or something, and then fill this with epoxy so you can see kind of shiny odd splodges of epoxy there that I've managed to miss. Yeah, you can see the bearings have, the, the, the races have just fallen apart and there's bearings doing their own thing. So ideally, it looks like a fairly standard bearing. Typically these things are. If we could get the bearing off, then we could make up a little epoxy thing to hold the fan and put on a new bearing. So if we could get all the balls on one side, we might be able to get the outer race to fall off. There we are, slipping all the balls to one side. Gets the outer race off. And you can see the bearing race there. The bearings were okay, but a bit dry, and that race had died from overheating, I guess. There's the inner race there. You can probably prize that up. Not the race the spacer. There's the inner race, and so I might have to cut that with a Dremel or something and tidy all this up, because what was happening was this was just rattling around inside. So I got this little nut breaker, and it's just a thing that as you turn it, it crushes a nut and splits it off, so I'm going to try and use it for this race. So like a fool, I had it all lined up, tightened it up with two spanners, as you can see below, and it went snap, and I didn't have the camera turned on. There's the race and there's the shaft where I've battered it a bit. So the shaft is 9mm. So the internal diameter was 9mm and the outside diameter is 26. 8mm thick. So the bearing arrived. 629Z. Metal sealed bearing. Now I've got to figure out how to get this fan to sit like this and somehow pot it up. So I'm going to have to make a little collar. It looks like there's a splined shaft, splined ring and that this plastic pressed onto the splines. I had a look at the little metal ring on the armature and it was going to be loose. The fan the fan here was going to be loose on it. I thought, well, what would do would be a piece of rubber tubing or a piece of hose pipe, something like that. Just slip the hose pipe over the armature shaft and then slip the fan onto that. And so if it's a snug fit, it should be, should be okay. So if I bore this out just the tiniest bit, less than half a mil on each side, I reckon, and make it circular, I might just be able to put a tiny dab of epoxy on it once it's got a pressure fit and I might do it. starting to slip down a bit. What I could do, because it's rubber, I could just put a longer piece of rubber on it. Stop it slipping down. Just rotate it around rather than forcing it. 
it just friction fits on? No, it's not perfectly aligned. Give it a go like that. This is the thing that holds the this holds the brushes. And this has to engage with its gears down below, and that's how the fan works there. The fan catches the air, it's as simple as that. So this is my own extremely crude dial gauge mechanism. I've got the armature chucked into the drill press. I've got a block of wood, some other blocks of wood, and a little piece of metal. I'm just going to rotate the chuck by hand and call it good enough. So I'm just testing if it's running evenly. I'm going to call that good enough because I don't know how much precision these things need, but I'm not too fussed about it. It says bonds in three minutes. So, equal measures. I've just got it sitting up in the handle of the drill. I'm going to try to scrape and pour this. So this drill could be 20 or 30 years old. Some think, oh, why don't you just buy a new drill? Well, I did that as well. I bought a new drill in Little. One with a hammer only action, drill and hammer drill. SDS chuck, it's the business. Someone else might say, oh, why are you fixing it? Why don't you buy a new drill? Someone else might say, well, why don't you fix it properly? What does that mean? You're making a repair to a 20 year old drill that you didn't really pay for, because you got it for so little money, maybe 10 pounds. It's done its time, served its purpose. If I was gonna get an armature for it, I wouldn't be able to find one. If I buy the armature with the fan, couldn't find one. So old, it's not for sale. What's the point? Put a one pound bearing in. If this doesn't work, it's no loss, except for probably an hour or two of my time, which I enjoy. I think it's worth doing. So I'm just making this as flat as possible, and then I'll let gravity take care of it while I go to work. It feels like I've been playing around with this thing for ages now. I've been out at it maybe four or five different times between waiting for bearings to come and that kind of stuff, and now the glue has gone off. I'm not gonna try and force it off. I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm gonna get the bearing onto that little shaft, and it needs a bit of a clean up, so I'll do that, and then I'll press the bearing on. It's a little bit of epoxy on the shaft, so I'm just cleaning it with an X-Acto knife. Put a tiny bit of grease onto this shaft just to help the bearing on. There's the bearing. So we're getting there. But I'll get a socket. It's just big enough to hold, chase the inside race. So let's drop this in and hopefully it spins freely. Yeah, it looks pretty good. The brush just goes in on the side. The cable has to be slid on. It's just a matter of sliding this up. Right, what way does this go? We're all back together. It should work. Let's give it a spin. Not much to show you other than that it works. It's a good little drill, this. It's got bits of grit and stuff in it, so when I turned it on, there was kind of stuff flying out of here, and I thought, wow, what's that? Is there something stuck in the fan? But no, it's not. Let's see if you can see this. But means the fan's working, turning freely, so all great. One pound, I don't know, 20p bearing, something like that. Very cheap. Only thing that's wrong with this drill now is that there's no rubber casing around the trigger, so while I wouldn't want to use it in the wet, I really wouldn't want to use it in the wet now, not that it makes much much difference. Uh, great little drill, can go 426 and a simple but long repair. Thanks for watching this video. If you've liked it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.